So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rope Hunter here. In this channel, I mostly talk about compound microscopes. Uh, so I'm very happy that today I'm able to present to you a stereo microscope for a change. Stereo microscopes, they allow you to look at larger opaque objects. These are object specimens that are non-transparent. And unlike compound microscopes, uh, stereo microscopes uh, also produce a three-dimensional stereoscopic view because the two eyes, they receive a different image. On the monitor, you can also see now the image of a fly that I've placed uh, on the stage um, of the stereo microscope. Now, the model that I have here is called the Nexus Zoom Evo from the company Euromax. Um, in this video, I will unpack the microscope, uh, I will put it together, and then I will give you an overview of the different features that the microscope has to offer. And finally, uh, of course, I will show you a few objects uh, under the microscope as well. The microscope is available in different versions. Uh, there are several stands that you can choose from. And I have the version with the so-called the rack and pinion stand. But the website has pictures and information of the different configurations that are available. As always, I arranged all of the parts on my table uh, besides the microscope head and the body. There are two eyepieces, obviously. There are also rubber eye cups. There's a dust cover, an instruction manual, a folder tube and a power supply cable. There's also an exchangeable stage in two colors, uh, black and white. Uh, this is uh, the round disc. And now to the assembly, which I think is, is quite self-explanatory anyway. I first inserted the trinocular head into the head holder and I fastened the screws, I attached the folder tube uh, to the microscope head and I dropped in also the eyepieces into place. And honestly, that's pretty much everything that you have to do. After plugging in the power supply, we can now have a look um, at the different features that the microscope uh, has to offer. And one of the most important features is the ability of the microscope to zoom continuously between a total magnification of six and a half times and, and 55 times. The magnification of the objective goes from 0.65 to 5.5. And then of course you have to multiply this number with uh, the 10 times magnification of the eyepiece. And the Nexus Zoom Evo differs uh, from the Nexus Zoom in that it also has a so-called a click stop mechanism for zooming. And this means that the different magnifications, they click into place. And uh, this allows for easier size comparison and for easier measurements because of a higher reproducibility. This microscope um, has a rack and pinion stand, as I already mentioned, and uh, turning the focusing knobs raises and lowers the microscope head. By turning the focusing knobs in opposite directions, however, you can change the tension to make it easier or more difficult to turn the focus knob. The microscope has two LED lamps, uh, one on the bottom and uh, one on the top. Uh, there is one main switch uh, that controls both of them. However, the light intensity can be regulated separately and independently. You can also remove the diffuse glass stage with the one made of plastic and then you can use either the white or the black side depending on which background color gives you the best contrast. The angle of the top lamp can also be adjusted and fixed in place. Needless to say, the distance of the two eyepieces can be adjusted as well. This is of course important for viewing comfort and for adjusting for different eye distances. Now let's have a closer look at the eyepieces. The field number is uh, 23 and this means that you're able to see um, very much of the specimen at a given magnification. So these are wide field eyepieces. The diopter adjustment is possible on each eyepiece separately by turning. They have a large eye relief uh, which means that they're also suitable for people who wear eyeglasses while looking through the microscope. In other words, you do not have to move very close to the front lens of the eyepiece to see um, a clear image. Now a few words uh, to the folder tube. It is able to accept the standard 23mm USB microscope cameras, like I've attached here. And by turning the photo tube, you can also make sure that the focus in the camera matches the focus in the eyepieces. This is referred to as parfocality. The nice thing is, is that it's possible to use the microscope also when uh, you want to use the camera at the same time. The image of the right objective um, is used also for making an image in the camera, but you're still able to see an image when you look uh, through the eyepiece. Now I'm saying this uh, because in one of my other stereo microscopes that I have, it requires me to switch between the camera and the eyepiece. So when I want to use the camera, then the eyepiece becomes black because the light is redirected to the camera. And uh, in this case here, however, it's, it's quite different. 
um, because you don't have to worry about that. Now let's have a closer look on how you can upgrade the microscope. The website lists a range of different accessories. For example, it is uh, also possible to connect a C-mount camera adapter to the microscope. In this case, you have to remove the photo tube and connect the C-mount adapter directly to the port. This adapter has to be obtained separately, of course. The whole setup becomes much more compact this way and power focality can now be adjusted by rotating a focusing ring on the adapter. Depending on the size of the camera sensor, you of course need to connect an adapter of the correct magnification. I also have uh, two Barlow lenses. Uh, you can connect them uh, beneath uh, the objective and their task is, is to change the magnification of the microscope. The two times Barlow increases the total magnification to a total of 110 times, while the 0.5 Barlow significantly reduces the magnification. Now you might wonder why someone would need a lower magnification, but the real reason is actually a different one. When you connect the 0.5 times Barlow, then you can move the objective much further away from the specimen, so it increases the so-called working distance. So if you need more space uh, because you're doing, for example, dissection work or soldering work uh, using electronics, um, then the 0.5 times Barlow will help you out here by providing more space. The two times Barlow really decreases the distance uh, quite a bit that is required. You also need more light, of course. And here I have now raised the specimen a little bit so that I'm able to focus all the way down um, to the specimen. I would say that uh, the total magnification of 110 times is way more than you would probably normally use, but there are indeed some areas of applications where you might need such a high magnification. There might also be cases where you need more light, um, and uh, in this case I recommend that you connect um, an additional ring light. Uh, there is an adapter for this uh, ring light which you can connect to the objective just like you connect the Barlow lenses. Now let's uh, have a look at a few objects uh, under the microscope. This is a copper coin and I'm now using the ring light uh, which gives a very even illumination because the light comes directly from the top, uh, there are no shadows and the image uh, looks uh, quite flat. And this is now light coming from the side and the effect is quite different. The imprint uh, of the coin now casts a shadow and this gives a much uh, stronger impression of depth. So now let's uh, do a quick uh, zoom test. Everything has been properly adjusted and therefore the microscope holds the focus throughout the magnification range. And now this here is a focusing test. Now let's uh, test uh, objects uh, that are completely flat. Uh, this here is a postage stamp. As I zoom in, you can see that there are some rapid brightness changes happening. And uh, this is my camera automatically adjusting its uh, exposure time. This here is now a demonstration on the importance of the background color. Here I've used the black side of the stage and this produces a nice contrast with the white paper. By the way, uh, the postage stamp shows the picture of uh, Mr. Karl Landsteiner, the doctor who discovered the blood groups and who was awarded the Nobel Prize. Stereo microscopes also allow you to observe transparent objects uh, like microscope slides. I've now turned on the bottom light and we are now looking at the cross section of a pine flower. Again, here the microscope camera adjusts uh, its exposure time. This here is now the display of a mobile phone. The individual subpixels, red, green and blue parts, uh, are now um, on their maximum intensity. And when you zoom out, uh, then the colors blend together and we see white. I think that's also a nice demonstration of additive color mixing. Here we are now again at a maximum magnification. This is uh, again an easy specimen because the screen of a mobile phone is uh, very flat. Electronics uh, are on the other end of the scale. Uh, these are surface mounted devices or also known as SMDs. And here the depth of field becomes relevant because uh, these components um, can be comparatively tall. And at higher magnifications, it's therefore not possible to both uh, see the top and the bottom parts in focus at the same time. But there is a nice workaround because what I've done here is I've done some image stacking and now all of the parts uh, are in focus. Now I hope that this video encouraged you also to get involved in stereo microscopy if you're not already involved. Uh, hopefully this video also gave you an insight into a few important features of stereo microscopes. 
obviously I wanted to thank the company Euromax again for having provided uh, this microscope uh, to me for evaluation. The link uh, to the technical specifications and the product page are as always in the description below. And for those of you who live in North America, there is a partner company called Globe Scientific, uh, which you can contact um, as well. Here again, I have put the links into the description below. So for me, there's nothing more to say than happy micro hunting and uh, see you again next time. Bye-bye.